Death Talk, episode 58. Welcome back, guys. The boys are back in town. We've done that before. We've got our fruit bowls. Deja We're vu. here. We don't have our fruit bowls. Everyone brought in their fruit bowl today. Rich is desperate to have a thing and a catchphrase. <laughs> so fruit bowl's it. So That's, let's just everyone do it. Knows, everyone knows me for it now. Yeah, everyone on the streets of Waltham yeah. and your drunken <laughs> rampage. Yeah, everyone knows. <laughs> I'm the fruit bowl guy. Oh, is that that guy rich? <laughs> oh, fuck. We got to get out of here. He's going to ask what's in my fruit bowl. <laughs> Mark, Strictly apples. It's trending right now. Hashtag what's in your fruit bowl. On, yeah, between us vocally right now. I don't. I think it's, I think it's a big hit. I don't mm-hmm. know if you know what trending means. Mm, I should probably look that up, huh? <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, we got a lot to talk to. Talk to you about today correct correct uh we have uh some news some tours as usual some contests as usual fruit bowl follow-up uh discussions on some music biz stuff we like to get into the biz stuff yeah follow rich at at what's in your fruit bowl <laughs> dot com <laughs> and um yeah we also got some um hotline stuff yep couple, always couple love couple giveaways hotline. Are we doing a giveaway? Yeah, two contests. Yeah, some deep discounts. Deep. I didn't realize. (laughs) Like V-neck, deep V. All right, then. Well, before we uh, get to all that stuff, Mark's going to bring us in with the news as Yuge. Oh, yeah. Um, Yuge is weird, but we'll go with it. Uh, We have a few things that are newsworthy. Uh, Weary Wounds, self-titled debut LP, is finally out. We've been talking about it for months. It's out now. So you can listen to the entire thing on your preferred streaming service. Uh, you can still buy it on vinyl and CD at your favorite record store on or on the Death Wish e-store. If it's not at your record store or your favorite record store, ask them to get it, and it's very easy. They can either like, get in contact with us or whatever. It's available for them to buy. So Distro at deathwishing.com. Yeah, if you, don't see your, uh, if you don't see it at your record store, just ask them about it. They can get it for you. Um, so that's out now, and um, you know there's still a lot of cool items related to wear your wounds with shirts and enamel pins and uh, prints and what have you. So there's lots of cool stuff. Um, Caleb will talk about the shows that Jake's doing for wear your wounds coming up. A uh, couple of foes, six yeah. Foes. So that'll be that'll be awesome. And there's a song called Arthritic Heart that was exclusive to a flexi seven inch on. Uh, for New Noise Magazine. Uh, so if you're a subscriber, I think you can still order it and get the Flexi. Yes. Yeah. Um, so do that because I think that won't be around to be able to purchase forever, probably just this month. So um, if you want the Flexi 7-inch, go get it. Um, if you don't and you just want to hear the song, it's all on all streaming services now. So give that a listen. It's not on the album, but it's another awesome Where You Wound song. So check it out. Uh, next. We've been doing the Bandcamp sales every week. I know we do these episodes every other week, so I don't talk about the week in between because we're not recording and you can't hear me when I'm just alone in my room. So, uh, Yes, we can. You can? Oh, God. I say some weird stuff. Sound carries up here. <laughs> um, hey, I'm talking about my across, bedroom live, in my apartment. You live across the street, so... Okay, that's true. <laughs> um, so, Plants Mistaken for Stars, Mercy is half off on Bandcamp this week. No code required. Just go on deathwishinc.bandcamp.com. It's going to be $4. The classic album. Classic album. It's a steal. For stars. Um, Whoa, no code? No <laughs> code. Um, so, yeah, give that a listen. If you already love it or haven't checked it out, this is a good reason to check it out. Caleb's going to talk about some more Planes news as far as tours go. That were coinciding with the sale, so spoiler uh, alert. Yeah, so. keep paying attention. Record store day is next Saturday, <laughs> April twenty second. Uh, go out to your favorite record store, buy something cool, check out one of the exclusive releases. We're going to be doing some really cool, interesting stuff on our site. Uh, maybe a sale, maybe a record you haven't seen before. So check it out next weekend. Uh, just pay attention to the internet, and you'll see some new stuff slash some stuff discounted and. Uh, yeah, so if you're interested in that kind of thing, pay attention. Also, just go out to your local record store as well because record stores are awesome and we want them to continue to exist because they're really cool and I love going to them. 
and it's very possible that they may not exist forever. So enjoy it while it's here. Well, and that on a somber note. No, I mean it's they'll still be around, but like I don't know when we're like eighty, will there be physical record stores? I don't know. If you keep buying stuff, there will be. Now the planet will blow up. By then. <laughs> yeah, we'll be over by then. The autonomous cars will be taken over by then. So true. Cars, the movie. I've never seen it. They have brains and they learn just like this autonomous car. And sooner or later, there's going to be no humans on Earth. It's just going to be fucking cars. Kind of like the Transformers. Sort of. Yeah. I think I found a Transformer. (laughs) Next, Caleb. All right, we got a lot of tours this week. So a bunch of awesome shit just got announced. Uh, Loma Prieta. uh, So they're going on their Australian tour June 16th to June 25th. Announced this week, they've got some New Zealand dates too. So that's June 6th, and then that continues to Australia through the 25th. Um, Converge got added to Boston Calling Festival. That's May 26th to the 28th. And big Converge news this week. They announced a North American tour with Neurosis and Amen Ra. This is July 28th to August 7th. You definitely don't want to miss that. Tickets are on sale now. So get them. Yep. No. They're going to go quick, so... Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Um, last but not least, for the new announcements, Plane Mistaken for Stars announced a U.S. tour with a few Canada dates, June 19th through the 30th. You say you say it like you don't want, not want to acknowledge Canada. No, I want to acknowledge them. I just... It's easier to say U.S. tour. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. like to, I like to group everything together, uh, just be very broad. Fair enough makes it easier for tour time so thanks for thanks for ruining my tour flow <laughs> just hope you're happy just clogged your tour flow <laughs> so burns going to europe july 22nd august 11th they also got announced on rev fest that's june 29th through july 2nd still don't know what day they might have announced it i haven't caught wind of that yet. i'm a, I'm a bad tour guide I'm if sorry. you're going to if you're going to rev fest just go the whole time yeah uh wear your wounds is going to start their European tour very soon. That's April 21st through the 30th, and the, their first show kickoff is at Camp Cedar Mill in Raleigh, Massachusetts. It's Caleb's backyard. Yeah, you know, no big deal. I'm just going to going to walk to the tho. That's uh, Can you that's, actually walk to it from your house? Uh, I don't think so. Oh. <laughs> I was like, that's really close. It's very cl- I could walk. You but could walk take- anywhere if you want. True story. Oh, oh shit. Mind that, blown. That's, uh, that's a Saturday, April 15th. Um, Young and in the Way has a west coast tour coming up that's june 10th through the 17th and they also are announced on this is hardcore this year Woo-woo. get it there we go tours go go see a show when tours when life comes to death uh we went to go see a show the other night yeah which one uh, Oathbreaker? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you not remember that? Were I just there? didn't know if we did a show in between we went to the Touche show. We well, did, I, we I did talk about that, I think. We that, talked I think. About that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Oathbreaker. Yeah. Went to another show. We've been hitting up a bunch of great shows. Lots of good stuff. Oathbreaker was very good. So good. So good. They they were just, uh, well, a couple of them were here today, and they, mm-hmm. just, they just left. Back to yeah. Belgium. Dropped um, off some leftovers. Keep an eye out. Oh, yeah. We have some leftover merch. They were, um, they were really good, though. Yeah, it was the um, uh, first time I really got to try out those vibes that we got into the store. <laughs> you vibing? Swipe up. Swipe to vibe. If you haven't heard, we got these new earplugs in the store. Uh, Caleb put them on there. Vibing. Fellow Shark Tank fans, you'll recognize these. We should talk about how, I mean, uh, so Mark and I are big Shark Tank fans. Caleb, too, he just Caleb doesn't have just the means. got into it. I'm a wannabe. He, he just got into to watch it. it. Yeah. Um, Shout out to Hulu. If any employees of Hulu are watching, give that shit to me for free. Yeah. <laughs> like and by watching, listening. Yeah. <laughs> like I watch. Um, well, so maybe they're watching the YouTube still image right now of our show. Ooh, it flickers a little. Yeah, at the beginning, yeah. Um, but I was watching it one night, and I think, uh, and I was like, wow, this is a really cool product. Um, and I think I... I, think I I mean, I talked to Mark the next day, but I was like, did you see the episode with the earplugs? And he's just like, yeah, those look really cool. So I ended up emailing the company and just being like, hey, you look, you look, you look like you do a cool thing. And they sent us a sample. And uh, yeah, now we're selling them on the store. So um, at, we should put an as seen on Shark Tank. 
as, logo as heard on Death sick. Talk. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but no, they're really good. Uh, I haven't used them yet. All right, you so, haven't had a chance to use them yet. You, yeah, okay. Um, I left mine at the office. Uh, so next time, next time. But I, I use them. I'll bring them to practice. I have. Yeah, yeah. It's weird because like you guys, do you guys wear earplugs every show? I should, but I don't. Yep, I do. You do? Yeah, I do too. I even like I've worn them to like movies and stuff too before. That's a little much. Well, some uh, there's a theater that I w- <laughs> go to that's like very very loud. <laughs> I'll stop it. Um, but uh, yeah, I use them. But you know when you put an ear po- uh, ear pods ear plugs, mm-hmm. ear pod, uh, and you kind of it feels like you're almost like. Like not really at a show anymore. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it's just like all muffled and yeah. like sounds weird. These don't like the best way to describe it is they. You feel like you're still at a show. Like all the high end still comes through. Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing, right? Does it still exactly feel loud? No, oh, sorry. It doesn't sound muffled. It's like it's exactly. I, so I took them out kind of in between just to be like. Oh, I wonder what it actually sounds like. So I took it out, and it doesn't sound that much different. Yeah. It just sounds like a lower volume. So you still, like, feel it, and, like, you still, like, can get into the band. A lot of times I'll wear earplugs throughout the entire show, but, like, the band that I really, really want to see, I'll take the earplugs out sometimes. Because, like, yeah. I, I, like, I just don't want to, like, lose out in the experience. Yep. I really shouldn't, but... Um, with these, I'll just keep them in. And they're, like, really lightweight. They're, like, really comfortable, too. Because they're, like, just made of, like, this, like, light plastic. And they're clear, too. Like, you didn't even notice I had them in, did you? No, I didn't. They were, it was actually they were, cool. Because, I yeah. mean, the room's dark, too, but you don't even notice that you have them in. Yeah. And they come with, like, a little carrying case, which is really nice. Though, you know, like, the crappy earplugs that you get. Typically, I'll just, like, keep, like, just lose them or I keep them in my jeans. They go through the wash and they're just, like, they yeah. destroyed or whatever. But these come in, like, a little nice carrying case. And, you know, I'll remember that I have a carrying case in my pocket. Leave it in the car or whatever. But... So far, so good. Really, really good experience with the uh, with the vibes. I'm excited to try them out. I just had I forgot them. They're the li- other day. So like you know, you can get a bag of um what earplugs for what like five ten bucks probably yeah. some somewhere around yeah, there. The, the orange ones. Yeah, and you know, typically you can you can wear them more than once if you want to, but they get kind of cruddy and gross, so you kind of throw them away. These yeah. are a little bit more expensive, but like the ear tips come off, and you can just like wash them, and they come oh. with like different sizes. That's a really good feature. Yeah. So I use the... They come with three different sizes. They come with like a medium, a small, medium, and large. I use like the small ones, so it seem to fit my ears best. I guess I got Did small drums. they give drums. you all three sizes yeah. when you buy them? Yeah. Wow. For sale now in the Death Wish store. Yeah, we'll put a link in the show notes. But they're honestly... Are you vibing? If you go to shows and you wear earplugs and you, you're using like crappy earplugs, use these. They're a fantastic investment. You only have a uh, hearing once. That you is can't true. get that shit back. And yeah, and if you don't use earplugs, these are a great thing to start off with because you're not going to lose the experience of a live show so don't so talk about that but the show <laughs> live show is all about the experience Oathbreaker was dope so tight really good Fin- I haven't finally seen finally got to see them been so long yeah I haven't seen them since Death Wish Fest I feel like yeah, was that the too. last time Same me too was that last yeah. time they Boston I think so yeah I think it was well they had the that last tour but it didn't come through here yeah was yeah. the time we saw them for a little bit in philly was that the same year hmm, i wonder probably i don't remember i think it was because that was the that was death with that was in the same week cause they were in america yeah. for death wish fest and yeah because you guys I, I remember the you guys left death wish fest and drove right to philadelphia it was a nightmare yeah <laughs> worst day of your life honestly a real good a real good year real good time but, van van broke down three times yep that was i was screaming at a wall <laughs> like alone Code Orange is playing the legendary set at this point they're like I am king this is hardcore yeah. set and we were still setting up because we got there late and we're like freaking out people were trying to buy shit and I just was behind all the shirts staring at a brick wall and screaming <laughs> no <laughs> oh, it was dark. you know Mark is just yeah. breaking down when that oh happens. it was crazy it yeah. was so it was so manic I remember just I was like why am I here what am I, I doing I picked them up um we stayed up all night, and I picked them up in the morning, like seven a.m. I was wearing the Cold World fitted hat. <laughs> yeah, he had the How the Gods Chill like My, fitted hat, like sitting on top of his head, like in a tank top, sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> we had like we were talking about this yesterday. We had like energy for an hour. Because we were like, just like, whatever, whatever, and Caleb would just kept going like, my life, my life, my life, my life. <laughs> 
Oh, and then it was just terrible. My hair was a little longer too, so I had to like slick back in the cap. So I'd take the cap off, and yeah. I'd, just, I'd look like a mess. And you got that giant a, dome. Oh god, dome piece. <laughs> that was a good year, though. That was a good fest. Yeah, all things considered. Yeah, if you think about everything else, it was still fun. Yeah. Well, I mean, on a on a. How did we get on that? I don't oh, know. Oathbreaker. I, I, yeah. yeah, yeah, they were really great, and um, uh, if you haven't had a chance to see them, they're going to be playing. They're doing some more stuff, but. You should definitely go see them live. Yep. Definitely an experience. Totally. Total experience. Um, a lot of people have been asking me, Fruit Bowl follow-up. No, um, one, no one has asked. Their response has been overwhelming. Overwhelming, to say the least. I think we got hundreds of emails and phone calls Whoa. about them. Yeah. Whoa. People, are people vibing your um, Actually, Bowl? I just got an email from Amazon asking if I would review the Fruit Bowl that I, I purchased. Wow, that's funny. A lot of people don't get that. Damn. Have you ever gotten a review request from Amazon? No, never. Okay. Was it just an automated thing to put one of those customer I, reviews I don't that know. hundreds I don't, of people do? Probably not. Oh, but, cool. I mean, maybe we could do the review now. Sure, put it in. This is good. Yeah. Reply. Um, okay. Hold on, I'm going to... Well, I'd like to put it in a draft before I actually submit. Yeah, yeah, of course. You don't want to right. rush. Anything. So, it's, first, it's going to ask me uh, how many stars. How many? This is difficult to say. How many? Let's put it this way. I've, it, how many apples? Well, I, hold on. I've used it for two weeks now, at least two weeks. So I've, it's just a bowl, man. Four out of five right? apples. And I'll put I'll, I'll put a link in the show notes <laughs> to the fruit bowl that I bought. It's more than a bowl. It's, it's a lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> Should have saw that coming. <laughs> um, I uh, the the I gotta say the. The weight of the bananas hmm, yeah. hanging from the, the hook that it's attached to the bowl ro- mm-hmm. works real well. Mm, great, great. So do the bananas taste better or it's the exact same? I'm not going to lie. I'm really excited. I'm really happy that I got the hanging fruit option, the hanging banana option. Now, was that an upgrade? I think it was included, but I would have paid extra for it. <laughs> what so happens when there's, um, when there's two bananas left? Do they still hang? It's quite the yeah. Bowl. Very easily. The what last one won't, has to go into the bowl. But oh, get your money back, dude. <laughs> no. But, but I gotta say, the bananas have been staying fresher and they're less bruised now. Fuck that. Not even lying. Bananas don't get they're bruised to, from just sitting. They're on meant a table. to be hung, Mark. They're. It's like they're. It's. It's simulating a tree hanging a banana from bananas hanging from a tree. Whatever company made this thing has got you hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> it's a fucking bowl. <laughs> It's not just any bowl. Has Mark. Mark always been this negative on the podcast? I don't. I just think he hates fruit. No, he loves fruit. I love fruit. Prove so right it, now, prove it. I got a banana and an apple. I've been in the other bra. <laughs> Wait, but are they hanging? <laughs> are they hanging? No, they're in a bag and they're probably bruised as fuck. Wow, you eat bruised fruit? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you trash. Uh, we <laughs> welcome to Wutta. Welcome to Wutta. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard that before? No. <laughs> you haven't heard that one? No. <laughs> Caleb's been saying it a lot. Welcome to Wutta! Julie and I were driving to her Worcester. And I just started yelling it. Welcome to Wutta! <laughs> you broke me! <laughs> I can't do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> wow! It's not, I don't know if it's that funny, but <laughs> Wait, I'm crying. Are you good? You okay? <laughs> Welcome to work. Yeah. <laughs> so this may be the hardest I've ever seen Rich laugh. He's leaning on his mic. I can't stand up. <laughs> oh God. <sighs> Welcome to Death Talk. I gotta breathe. I'm crying. <laughs> I didn't think you'd think it was that funny. It's not even funny. It sucks. <laughs> Why are you laughing then? I don't know. It wasn't. I don't know. I'm so, I'm so sad. <laughs> I'm like scared. Is Rich actually upset? Oh, I'm worried oh. for him. Oh. <laughs> don't do it again. <laughs> Welcome to Woodjack!
I got to collect myself. All right, why were you saying that? I, I told you, we were driving through Worcester. I just started yelling it. I don't know. <laughs> it just happened. There's no reason. You ruined my fruit bowl follow up. I have another important topic. The to right, about. bring it up. Let's Backwards see. treadmill guy at what the gym. The, what is this? Oh, yeah, what is right. It? This. There's a gentleman. He looks Italian. I'm assuming he's Italian. Is he from Wutha? No, no. I'm assuming he's from Waltham. But he wears an all black outfit. Like, cool. Every time I see him, he's always in the same outfit: black crew neck, black sweatpants, black shoes, and they don't look like workout shoes. I think they look like like fancier. Like I think he's wearing like loafers to the gym. I'm not really sure. <laughs> but this guy, there's three rows of treadmills, and uh, you know if you if you you hop on a treadmill, you start going right. Is that what you do? Yeah. Backwards treadmill guy hops on the <laughs> treadmill backwards and walks backwards on the treadmill. Can, can I've been you, trying to figure out how he's walking. Can you? Do, do you guys have any idea why he would be walking no, backwards on the treadmill? he's trying to become younger. He's trying to reverse time. If anyone knows why someone would walk backwards on a treadmill... I'm just trying to like, think about it. Well, the, <laughs> the weirdest thing... So, so like, he, he got on the treadmill... <laughs> You're going to fall. He got on the treadmill... I've I've known I've seen this guy hundreds of times at the gym. Like he's every always, every time it's he's, not he's it's there not a just lot. Sometimes that he does it. It's always backwards. walks backwards. Only in the only no, backwards. he does walk forwards oh. too. But like he does like part of the. You gotta ask him, and you gotta take your phone out and record it for the show. So yeah, he straight up. I'm sure he gets questions about it a lot. I was on I was on the I was running on the treadmill, and he gets on the treadmill. that's in front of me, <laughs> and I said, "Oh God!" And he's facing you. Oh no! He starts walking forward first. And then he turns around. He does like moves on the. He does like you know. He spins around on the treadmill. Maybe he just likes attention. And he looks me in the eye. He looks me in the fucking eye while I'm running. And he's walking backwards on the treadmill. Do you think he's? Uh, I felt threatened. I should. <laughs> I mean, okay. I'm, this is, I just this is be a judgment free zone at Planet Fitness. Oh, true. Oh shit, you were at Planet Fitness. You, sh- I, you I should have rung the lunk alarm. Lunk dude. alert. I felt. Ah! <laughs> I felt. I felt. Judged, Vi- violated, maybe. In I just your safe space. I just googled it, the, and there's an article: the many benefits of walking backwards. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Cite your source. Backward walking, also known as retro walking, oh. is said to have originated in ancient China, where it was practiced for good health. Okay, but why? Okay, this is, this. I'm not going to read this. this. Is a lot, but. It says, uh, walking backwards gives you the chance to work out all the muscles in your legs, such as quadriceps and calves, which take a backseat to your hamstrings and glutes during regular walking. It says it's a more intense, comprehensive workout in less time. Walking backwards for just 10 to 15 minutes, four days a week for four weeks, has been shown to increase flexibility in your hamstrings. You gotta get some lessons from this guy. Backwards treadmill guy. You are having some trouble with your glutes, aren't you? My glutes are fine. <laughs> they could be better, though. I guess we can go on to less important topics. Yeah. Like um, streaming. You guys stream? Swipe up the stream. All right, here we go. Uh, new licensing deal with Universal Music Group for Spotify. So if you didn't know, Spotify's been out of um, their deals with all the major labels for a little bit now. Ooh. So, so I didn't know that. So they're, that means they're, they're all working on a new contract. They're all renegotiating. Yeah. So and how long have they been out of the deal? I don't know if that off the yeah. top of my head, but uh, Universal Music Group was the first to uh, strike up a deal. Bold. A deal. So here, here's the uh, here's the here's the bullet points. Let's hear. It. Um, so here's a new feature. Uh, Universal Music Group will have the option now to have albums on premium only for two weeks. So do you know how there's different tiers of Spotify? Yep. There's the free yep. tier and the premium. If a new album comes out, it will only be on the paid tier for two weeks. So, so you have that option now. This only helps Spotify, really, right? Well, it, it probably it, it would probably maybe is increase. Universe, Universe in, is going to get less streams. Spotify is going to get more subscribe. Right. Premium subscribers. But so the 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 rate for uh, premium uh, free streams versus 
the premium is much lower. Oh, so I didn't know that. Technically, if more people were getting on the premium, premium, uh, getting a premium account mm-hmm. and paying for the service, they'd be making more money off those streams versus the free tier. I didn't realize that. Yes. Yes. Um. So, so but this it, is just an option, right? Like it's a, an option, yeah. Like yeah. the label or whoever's releasing would. But I heard you would get, have the option. I heard you get the most royalty, like the highest royalty percentage rate from uh, backwards streams. <laughs> yeah, no, that's not. I knew true. a joke was coming. I knew it. That's not true. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm fine with it because I'm a premium user. Um, yep. I do think there is a. I do think there is a. Uh, it, the free tier should still exist. Yep. You know why? Because, like, I mean, just like for us, when we share playlists, anyone can listen to those. Like, you don't have to be a paid Spotify user. Really? Yeah. I didn't think about that. Okay. Yeah. The, if you, now, if you don't have, a, you have to have an account, but you don't have to pay for the account. Yep. So you can still listen to it, but you'll have ads in between songs. Like, you might play a couple songs, and there an ad will, will show up. Also, if you have a free account, you can't listen to albums. Correct? You can just shuffle things. I don't. That's know. true. Is yeah, that, my friend... Uh, is that true? I don't know. Yeah, I think you can listen to albums. I don't think so. I think, Unless my I think, friend's just pulling my leg. I try. I like I think, recommend her music all the time. She's like, well, yeah, if it shows up it, when I shuffle like their band. <laughs> I could be wrong. Yeah, I thought you could on the... So not on mobile. On mobile, you can't. You can't listen to albums. You can only shuffle. But on the desktop, on the, like, the Dude, Mac I or PC... Hate, I hate how there's differences in the Yeah, Really? Desktop. You can listen to albums. Because we have a... We, we, on one of our computers there's like a free account because mm-hmm. we like just test shit out on it and make like some of the we make some of the playlists uh, yeah. for our page on like this random computer in the office and we can listen to albums there but there's ads in between it I should tell her that shit yeah but it's like it's, it doesn't help you if you're like, like it doesn't help you if you're on your iPhone trying to listen yeah I think she's probably using her phone I don't yeah. know um, singles would be available on all tiers so if you like to release a single before the album that would still be available on all tiers, Got free hype, and premium. Hype yep. it up. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then uh, there would actually be a reduction in royalty rates. So if you do this, well, they already signed it. They're, they're actually getting less royalty. The royalty rate went down. But wait, the reduction in royalties is just per, uh, for everything, or if you do this thing with the windowing? For no, two no, weeks? no, no. This is for everything. Okay. I, I feel I, like I, I, Universal's I, not getting a lot, a lot out of this. Well, I mean, there's seems shitty people smarter than us negotiating these deals. Yeah. So no, I know. I'm just trying to. I, I, I assume that, and maybe I'm completely wrong about this, but I assume that the albums going only to the premium tier for two weeks might entice more people to sign up for the premium tier. Would that would then make more users, which would hopefully generate more royalties, make, negating kind of the royalty rate. You know what I mean? I wonder Change. if, I wonder if. Um, oh wait, hold on. Premium only for two. So after two weeks, anyone can listen to the album. But the first two weeks. What about ex- other services? This is only Spotify. I don't. This so is, this is just this is just okay. the new Spotify deal. So which like, is the big, you know, the biggest potentially like it could be on Apple Music or Pandora and those. Yeah, two weeks. yeah, but Apple Music doesn't have a free tier. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Yep. All the tiers are paid for. Yep. Hmm. I feel like they're long game in it here with this royalty. Yeah. That's kind of a gamble too. Well, you never know. I mean, yeah. People like their free music. It's it, it, Spotify is at the uh, is the top of the heap right now. Speaking of other streaming services, Mark, you've been using the new Pandora, right? Yeah, I have been a little bit. Did you ever get an invite? No, I didn't. You never got an invite. <laughs> Rich signed up for like a beta test of this new Pandora uh, streaming service that they bought out the streaming service I loved called RDO years ago before it shut down. I put Mark's email in there. Just be like, oh, Mark would like to try and this out. you did out. it at the same time, right? Yeah. <laughs> I got an email next day. Yeah, and I didn't get one at I'm, all. <laughs> I've, I've, I'm already like bored with it. I like forget it's on my phone, yeah. and you still just want to try it. I wonder. I know this is probably like the same thing, but would you like RDO? Would you love RDO as much now? If you no, once I started using Spotify, I liked it better. I like Spotify honestly for the uh, a, the, the what the friend feed. Love the friend feed. That's Best like thing. my favorite part. It's Needs not, to be in mobile. Come on. Yeah, seriously, I love that shit. I love, honestly, I can you can people write in 
people who like if you've heard what music i like and you think that it's sort of similar or if you just like any kind whatever if you just want to tell me your spotify thing and i can follow you cool because i want to follow more people and i don't know that many people who are on spotify so send in your username well, you, if, don't, you don't use facebook that's why yeah also um, yeah mark Put your username out there so people can follow you. You're listening yeah. to music all day. Mark Connolly 200. <laughs> Two M A R K C O N N O L L Y 200. Follow him. Follow, he'll follow me. Follow and then, you back. Yeah, I will because I love seeing what people are listening to and I've found out about a lot of music that way. But other than the friend feed, the reason I like Spotify so much is the play counts. Love the play counts. You love data. I love it. He I actually love, does. You're the you love. It's so sick. Like bands I don't care it's, about. It's bands. Like, like, I, I, I it's can, just great. I don't need the play counts to like basically give Mark's top ten on Spotify. I could tell you like, yep, Menzinger's number one. Yep. I don't even know what number two would be. Uh, Saves the day. Probably because the catalog is so large that it's yep. definitely up there. Um. Uh. I think Wet is probably up Wet's there. definitely up there. What are you talking about? We're just talking about your. He's talking playlist. about something a little bit different, but we're talking oh. about your play counts. Oh, gotcha. Mark means play counts as like you go to an artist page. Oh, and yeah, like top ten. Songs. Oh, I think you meant your personal one. Okay, that's cool too. Even though Spotify, if you're listening, any employees, uh, I never got the email summary <laughs> summarizing my year. You and didn't. I looked for it. I was like refreshing my email account he was around December, for it. and I never got it. My every year, every <sighs> at the end of the year, Spotify sends out like a hey, this is what you listen to, blah blah blah. And every year we get it, and Mark would be so bummed out. He's like, oh, oh audio doesn't send that yeah. out. And this year, Mark's like, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna know. I'm gonna see what I listen to. <laughs> the one I've only had spot. I don't know when I failed. Two Novembers ago, I started with Spotify because I was in the car driving back from Long Island. Because audio shut down after Thanksgiving, and I wanted to listen to music in the car and signed up for Spotify on my phone. And I got an email that year, but it was only three weeks worth of listening to music. So I was like diligent in like using my account, so I wanted to track all the information, and they never gave it to me. Anyways, I like looking at artist play counts. It's really fun. It's a really weird gauge of it, it's- what's going on, and it's actually like since a lot of people are using Spotify, it's a real good way to find out like what's like, you know, what's actually happening or not happening. It's like when, um, it's like when MySpace play counts were a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Could you actually, were those fake sometimes? Oh, definitely. Yeah. I feel like, you know, some asshole in the band was just sitting there replaying the song the whole time. Yeah, probably. There's probably like some hack too that you could be like, here, just yeah, like pay probably. like 10 bucks and get a band, million plays. Yeah, bands don't do Fuck, that much. I hope, I wish I could find the article. I read an article years ago about, uh, there's like a handful of bands from the early to mid 2000s that got like big record deals based on MySpace plays, and like it all fell through. Yeah, like, it's all fake. They would like just tour, and like no one even knew who they were, and it, they got all this money or whatever because wow. thanks Tom. <laughs> yeah, thanks Tom. Anyways, so can we go to the next news thing? Let's do the next news. So thing, speaking yeah. of streaming stuff. Kanye West's album Life of Pablo, which we've talked about a bunch. Uh, becomes the first streaming only album to go platinum. Was there no physical copies of this record? No physical copies of the record. I I should look into this more, but I do remember the day that he did that live stream of the fashion show and playing the album for the first time from Madison Square Garden. I was watching it here, and he sold copies on his site digitally for like twenty bucks. So oh, it's really? like. Well, he, they're, they're, and then it still, went down, but he did that for like a week. So, like, you can still buy like the iTunes version and the Amazon version. You, you can still buy downloads of the record. You can, yeah, yeah, See, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe this is just worded weirdly, and it's maybe it's just like first digital only. Well, but that's probably not true. Either. I think there's a. Didn't we talk about? Didn't we talk about like how um st- how many streams are counted as an album sale? Yeah, it's fifteen hundred. Right. Yeah. They're probably totaling up the streams, yeah, and saying like this is a platinum record. If you well, total up the streams, it said it's been three billion streams, in, yeah, and it was it, released in February of last year, so it's only been fourteen. months. I'm gonna do the math here. Hold on, hold on. And here I am thinking it's what is three billion divided by fifteen hundred? That would be two million. Holy shit! Okay, wow, two million is platinum, right? Yeah, I think so. Holy shit! There you go. That's crazy. But. Here I am thinking that, like, if I look up a band or just find out about a band and they have, like, 400,000 plays on a song, I'm like, 
yo, they're big. <laughs> <laughs> but really, like, or even like sometimes a band I just find out about that has 25,000 streams on like a song, I'm like, they're doing something right. <laughs> but <laughs> three billion is just like, how do you even... Father Stretch My Hands. It's a yeah. good song. Man, I can understand how it might be <laughs> kind of hard to love a girl like me. <laughs> no, no, don't keep I going. Don't blame. <laughs> You don't have to no, we deep. can't afford the copyright. Yeah, we definitely cannot you. afford the. I don't know. It would Kanye West coming after us. I would love Kanye West coming after <laughs> me. Just okay. So that's interesting, I guess. Yeah, because that's, yeah, that's what crazy. world we're living in now is that you don't need to make fucking. You don't need to do the routine of making a bunch of CDs and putting them in the Best Buy and making the ads on the fucking or having a Target exclusive song or some shit. It's literally just like. He put it online and changed it a bunch. Also, yeah. it was title exclusive for like months. Yeah, it's it funny. was on Spotify. Till funny too. Like long I don't after. I don't know. Like I'm definitely not. Pro- I'm probably not one of the target demographics of a Kanye West fan. Definitely not. None of us are. <laughs> yeah, uh, but like I've never seen like a like a Life of Pablo ad or anything. Have of you? Not. No. Like, that's something like maybe, but he did those pop up shops. Yeah, where like, he sold T shirts for like forty bucks. Are they people not waiting running, in line like, for ads days. on Facebook for stuff? Like, you know what I mean? Like, probably it just, not. It, I don't yeah. know. Honestly, I think he did that tour. I think we are the target demographic for a Kanye record. <laughs> yeah. part, part of it, and also I'm this. Maybe I'm off base here, but I feel like it's a little. I'm surprised it took this long. Whoa. For a platinum digital release, hmm. I guess there's just like not that streaming. Yeah, I guess there's just not that many. I think a only lot releases. of I think a lot of mainstream artists, like obviously, are still doing physical. Well, no, 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 no. I think they have a lot of like, w- like this album had a lot of hits on it. Like it, had a, it was like a complete album. Mm-hmm. A lot of these mainstream artists are releasing one song, and it's like getting yeah. more. It's like getting way more plays than the rest of the album. You know what I mean? Yeah. This album seemed to be it was a good album. You know. Yeah, so. no, I, no, I'm just, yeah. It um, seems uh, like it, this would have happened earlier, but I, what do I know? Move on. Yeah. Next one. What do we got, Mark? I was trying to see, like, another, th- like, Chance the Rapper's coloring a book strictly digital also. I don't even, it's not for sale. It's free on SoundCloud, and then <clears> there's just on streaming services. I was trying to see if I could find out how many streams that's been, but I can't find anything. Here's what I was trying to that. say. Here's what. Let's say an artist sells a million CDs and they get two billion streams. Do those combine? Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They a do. couple years ago, like the Fast and the Furious soundtrack <laughs> didn't sell that many copies, like physical copies or even like a full twelve however many song download on iTunes. But the number, like the first song on it, was like a hit song that was on Spotify and had hundreds of millions of plays. Was that and the that- one for Paul Walker? Yes, yeah. and that was the number one album in the country that week because it had hundred blah 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 million streams, and I think the single was out like months before the whole album was released. I think but, we actually talked about that on the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, and it was just sort of like no one even listened to the rest of the album, but it charted at number one because the equivalent fifteen hundred whatever streams to an album sale. Gotcha. That's what, it's it's weird. Yeah, I just I don't pay enough attention to this stuff. I should pay more attention to no, it, honestly, you, but. Fucking industry, kid. Yeah, it's just... I don't know, it's weird. Fucking what the... <laughs> don't. Because <laughs> 25,000 divided by 15... <laughs> See, remember I was like, 25,000 streams is a lot. That's 16 albums <laughs> sold. <laughs> That's great. That seems... That's awful. That's so many streams for yeah. one sale, technically. Uh, yeah. I don't know if that's fair, but I also... They probably did research on it, and I don't know. Who knows? At least they're counting it as an album sale or something. At least it somehow is factored in. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, how long until charting and everything isn't even important anymore? It's been around for a long time. Yeah. Um, I think it always will just because it's been around for a long time and people want to say that it's like, oh, like it's the, like, yeah. like the further, the further we get into digital, I don't think there will be like, yeah, the, but the chart, I think it's going to be like Spotify's like top artist or whatever. Yeah, I mean, I think digital, that's, you know? I mean, Spotify sends out a weekly, do you get that weekly email? I Spotify? wish I did. You get oh. it too. 
Yeah, basically, I of, can forward uh, it to you. It's, it's, of, it's, um, it's honestly the same thing every week. Yeah, it's the same. Five yeah, it's artists. like oh, Justin Bieber's number one. It's like how are you still number one? No, and Ed, Drake, or, Ed Sheeran, and Ed Sheeran, Ed Sheeran yeah. and Drake are one and two every. But week. then you get into it. The thing where you were saying this the other day, Spotify can make any song they want the number one song because of like algorithms and playlists yeah, and shit. I, I, so I it's just like I don't. There was an article I read about um, how Spotify can make any song number one if it yeah. just puts it through this certain algorithm. So like Spotify, like the what, what is it, the RIAA, the Recording Industry Association of America, whatever. That and, like, billboard charts or whatever, that's what people, like, see as, like, facts of just, like, oh, how many, how much did this sell or whatever. No one's going to question that. But Spotify is, like, its own company, and they're, like, doing their own top lists or anything. So it's, like, they could just put whoever they want. Like, at one point, Spotify could just buy out, like, Frank Ocean, Drake, Ed Sheeran, just be like, oh, yeah, just be on our Spotify record label or whatever, and then just be like, these are the top artists, when they're, like, not, but enough people are on the app that everyone just thinks it. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, like, uh, Caleb's, you know, Caleb's um, uncle could be the CEO of Spotify and just say, like, hey, you suffer on acid, you want to be number one on the Billboard charts this week? We'll put you through the algorithm. I mean, we've already been platinum. <laughs> yeah. No, but I'm being dead serious. There's like there's yeah. like a, a a scientific algorithm that can it can create. I actually get the um so I actually it sucks that people put thought and creativity into music and they like try to make it the best they can and it just comes down to like a math problem whether they can make oh, no, money off totally it or not. <laughs> it totally is. And um and uh too real. I get I get like um there's a service if you go to like spotifyartist.com you can you can if you're you can get your band verified if you if you have to have a certain amount of followers um but you also get access to more data about your band anyone can do this it's not like a it's not like an industry thing it's it, as long as you're as long as you get your band um verified and then like you have to hook it up to twitter blah blah, blah. uh you can actually see where your plays come from and what playlists they come from and the majority of plays typically still come from Discover Weekly and New Release Radar. So, like, the algorithm is putting... Release Radar is the best. Yeah, Release Radar. Um, the algorithm is putting songs into those playlists for people listening to them. People are listening to them. So, it's... I mean, there's different philosophies. Like, I feel like Apple Music has more of a... as It has more of a um, curated, real human vibe to it. Where Spotify is using algorithms to create the playlist for you. Yeah. Um, now they do have human curated playlists. Like <clears throat> you see, you see a ton of them. But yeah, like, like s- those don't staff picks. Death Wish staff. Death Wish staff picks. Follow us on Apple Music and Spotify. Bam 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 bam. Ad hashtag ad. Um, but the majority of those plays are coming from Discover Weekly and Release Radar, which are algorithmic. Like, there's not some guy at Spotify being like, oh, I think Mark would uh, like this new uh, Johnny and the Pickpockets track. <laughs> you know, as far as algorithms go, uh, Discover Weekly, you could work you could, you could work on your numbers a little bit. But Release Radar, mm, bueno. I love Release Radar. I yeah. found out about a lot of bands through Release Radar. Yeah. Yeah. Discover Weekly, you need a little work. <laughs> Discover well, Weekly thi- is more suggestion-based. Yeah. Release yeah. Radar is like, they know you like this stuff, yeah. you're, and you're going to yeah. like this. Or, or you're, at least you're going to be interested in what's what's coming out. Yeah. Because it'll give you songs even if you don't follow a band. It's yeah. like, if you listen to a band once, they'll be like, oh, maybe they'll be interested in... There's a this couple song. bands that I found out about that I never listened to before. Oh, really? And I really liked it. <clears throat> and that's another thing too. You're right about that because, like, sometimes just like a hyped song in a certain genre, or like maybe this band has other bands that you listen to yeah. related to them. It's like, ugh, dude, I hate yeah. math. Plus, Discover Weekly, like, they'll suggest a lot of. Uh, older albums Dude, just, from bands I like where it's like uh, yeah I know that one just yeah, up, just yeah. upload just upload the playlist into my brain tell me what I like <laughs> <laughs> I'm puke I, I want my my music taste to be algorithmically curated so can we talk about the next news thing we've been talking about this for a while but it's I think it's still interesting yeah okay so this is an article about how um, it sort of rounded up how all music industry revenue came in in 2016 and half of all digital music revenue came from streaming streaming services makes sense which is 
Crazy. Paid downloads saw their biggest ever decline down 22%, which makes Damn. also more sense because it's like I don't even think that that's an option yeah, sometimes. Why would I buy it? Yeah. When we like post about like a new album, it's like pre-order it on iTunes or something. It's just sort of like, oh, yeah, you can do that. I yeah, forget. people still do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, people still do. So it went down twenty two percent, and it said that paid music, paid subscription music, was the fastest growing category. It more than doubled, accounting for a third of total U.S. music industry. So that's like sick because if everyone starts using it, everyone's gonna make bank. Like the people putting music on Spotify, everyone's gonna make money. If sooner or later everyone just catches on to doing Hopefully. it, we'll just make a bunch of money. Because we have a large catalog. Yeah. I think it, it really Not comes- to sound like weird and money, but it's like, yeah, we want to make money. Right? We gotta we're, live. A, we're a business. So it's like, I, I don't want to sound stupid of being like, we want to make a lot of money. But it's like, I don't know. The more people on Spotify, the more money everyone, all bands and labels can make. Because they're just if you can, more. If you can bank on getting $120 out of you know a majority of people each year, 10 bucks a month, 120 bucks a year, to listen to music... That's a pretty good. Th- th- there's so much room to grow with streaming. Yeah. There's still such a small percentage. I have to look at the, what the recent rates are, but and it still feels like a lot of people are on it. And when I even it close feels to like our lot. generation is, but like I feel like uh, I don't. And no one in my family uses any sort of streaming. Yeah, my mom, my I, sisters. I set my family up with Spotify, and they don't understand it. <laughs> yeah. I try to convince my dad because my dad was like, he has a bunch of CDs, and he listens to CDs in his office and stuff. And he wants me to like upload the CDs onto his computer's yes, iTunes it's and like, put no. it on his phone. It's like, and dude, I'm, just pay ten bucks. Yeah, You're fine. but he and he can afford it, you know. He's got a job. <laughs> He's got one. Yeah, my my mom is the same way. She's like, upload all my CDs. It's like, no, literally. Open up Spotify, search for anything you want to listen to. She's like, I have to search. What do you mean? like? I feel like having a CD. You look through like you have choice. You have a limited amount of choices. You like this is what they're used to, and you have a limited amount of choice. And you go, well, let's go with that. Does she yeah. use Amazon Prime? Does she have? Yeah. Any- so she already has a streaming service. Yeah, that too. So but you don't I, even need to pay for an extra one. Well, I I have the Spotify family account. I have a few people. On yeah, yeah, anyway, yeah. So it wasn't. Do you pay for everyone? Yeah. Wow, look at I you. Have, I have a family account, too. Really? Yeah. I should do that. It's really cheap. It's not bad. Yeah. It's only extra I think it's 15 bucks, bucks yeah. a month, and it's like but five. how many people? You five, can add up to five, I'm pretty yeah. sure. Jesus. So I've got... Apple Music. Me, Sam, same. Sean, and Catherine should just be on one account. Wait, you guys yeah. all have separate accounts? Yeah. Just split it. Fuck, that's stupid. Okay, I'm going to figure this out. No, you actually should be paying for separate accounts. It's fine. Yeah, because yeah, cause then you're... <laughs> Why? Just screwing over the industry, bro. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we'll all pay separate accounts. Yeah. Also, when is anyone going to be like, oh, yeah, uh, here's two bucks for I Spotify really hope I still pay for, like, 20 people to use my Hulu account. Yeah, because you're a sucker. I really hope that Spotify comes out with, the, like, a like a high-quality, like, HD, whatever you want to call it, you know, like like a like a mastered for iTunes, like, yeah. high-res option, because I just want to pay more money. Yeah. I just want to, like, I just, like... I think the service is. I think ten bucks a month is way too too little. The girl I was talking about before uses Spotify free. This girl Kate I'm friends with, and she just doesn't get. I'm just telling her that it's worth it. Like, I was explaining to her if they upped it to fifteen or twenty dollars a month, I would probably do it. I would just figure out a way because I use it every single day. Yeah, it's just like the best. And she's like, I can't find it in my budget to like. Spend ten dollars, but it's just yeah, like she's Jesus. eating a freaking fifteen dollar burrito. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, she spends whatever. So it's just looking at you, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> I also, but, I just don't understand, yeah. like, not the learning curve necessarily, but how, like, one, let's say, like, okay, you've sold me on Spotify. I'm gonna open it, and then, like, oh, well, I don't, I don't like it. I don't like. What do I listen yeah. to? It's I don't get like it's infinite, basically. Yeah. Allie and I were talking yesterday about how she's got three huge binders of CDs and she doesn't have a CD player in her car. And uh, she's afraid of like, (laughs) we should have Allie talk about this because she thinks as, you know, you can save, you can download something on Spotify to your phone and not use data. She thinks that it's fake. (laughs) She's, she like, she thinks that like, it's always using data and they're just messing with her. (laughs) I mean, it uses a little bit, but not, you know, it doesn't download any. Okay. Yeah. That's a different, I can get into, I can get into this whole thing. Yeah. When you listen to a song, when you listen to a song once, it keeps it on your phone. 
It, it, yeah. It, even if you listen to it, don't save it. It's, it caches in your phone. At least on iOS. I don't know about Android. But, like, when you download it and use it without data is what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, whatever. So, the reason... the. The reason I'm bringing this up is because we were talking about how she has these binders full of CDs, but it's like you can only, like you were saying, they only have a certain amount of choices to what to listen to. But you could be like on a road trip, say you have unlimited data or something, you could be like, when's the last time I listened to Tom Petty? And you have his entire discography at your fingertips. (laughs) I just said Tom Petty because why not? But like... It's your heartbreaker. It's insane. (laughs) I don't know. I still I still set up my Spotify like it's like my CD case in my cars because I, I just I have like started five doing albums. that. Yeah, I have like five albums saved and downloaded. So like when I'm on the go, I can listen to those without going through my data. And do, I don't and care then about here that. Comes, but... Here comes here comes Bay. Can we listen? To, can we listen to some? I want plugs it in streaming every time. Bye bye overage limit. Oh, you don't have that unlimited data. No, I don't. Oh, gotta I get honest, on that train. I think that people that aren't using Spotify are afraid of new things. I'm guilty of this sometimes, too. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. What? What? Just All right, self-driving it. car? No. I'm <laughs> or any streaming service. I'm saying I'm guilty of this, too, because it's like an app that they don't know about, and they hear a lot of people talk about it. And if Spotify or streaming services didn't exist, and CDs or MP3s were the only thing, and someone explained to a non-Spotify user hey, what if this thing existed and it, it's what Spotify is? They'd be really into it. But the fact that it's like already a thing, it already is popular with some people and they have to figure it out and they have to pay for it, I feel like that's the reason. It's like how you were scared about using OmniFocus. I wasn't scared about it. Dude, now you're, you're fucking... I'm Context still not using OmniFocus. I am using OmniFocus. Just every day, I select all, drag to the next day. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you got to rework your due dates then. No, my shit's good. I got my newsletters in there. I got when uh, people owe me money. <laughs> Hashtag pay up. <laughs> um, That's been, that, that was a lot of discussion. Right, we can go to the next thing. We're way overboard on discussion here, but let's go to the next thing. There is, uh, let's do feedback. How about that? Feedback. If you want to get in contact with the show, you can use the hashtag AskDeathTalk on Twitter. Email us deathtalk at deathwishing.com. But the preferred way to get in contact with Rich the show at deathwishing.com. Email no, them. is the Death Talk hotline. And if you want to get hot, and if you want to do that, you can call seven five four seven zero three eight two five five. Detox seven five four seven zero. Detox. Detox. Uh, leave your first name, where you're from, and a brief message. Just a brief one. Don't have to go too long. Um, and you can be a part of the show. Just like Joe from Jersey. Yo, this is Joe from Jersey. To continue your fruit discussion, I must tell you to try durian. It's uh, from over in the Asia area. I had that shit in Hong Kong. Um, the dudes brought it into the office and were told to remove it from the office because it smells like shit. Um, but if you're trying to eat some crazy fruit with spikes and shit, definitely go with durian. Um, cotton candy grapes, my girlfriend got them. They're absolutely awesome. They do taste like cotton candy. And you should freeze grapes. Um, I know you don't like them cold, but freeze them. They're pretty awesome. That's pretty wild. I know a lot about fruit. I don't even eat that much fruit. And I know you have no control over tour dates, but can you please like mention the frameworks? They should probably come to the East Coast because I'm getting kind of annoyed. Later. Cotton cranny grapes. Cotton cranny grapes. Cotton cranny grapes. Cotton cranny. <laughs> cotton cranny. Cotton, cotton cranny. cranberry. Cotton cranberry. I looked crazy. up durian. Craisins. Can you guys look at this fruit? I, I looked it up too. This oh, shit's shit. crazy. shit. That's that exactly looks, what you're looking for. It looks like there's a Twinkie inside the <laughs> fruit. He says it smells like <laughs> shit, though. Where's it actually from? Hong Kong, he said? Uh, let me look up the origins of the... Uh, this does look crazy, and this is the type of fruit that I'm looking for. <laughs> this is the type of fruit that you have in your bowl, and people being like... That seems like a pretty dangerous fruit to have in your bowl. That's going to bruise up a banana. You'd have to be careful with the other yeah, fruits. Dude, it's fucking spiky. Spikes. Um, this... I, yeah, I don't kid, know. Kill, your nipples look really hard right now. Are they freaking you out? They're freaking me out. <laughs> Sorry, it's a little cold. It looks yeah. like a south. Welcome to Wikipedia. <laughs> it looks like a Southeast Asia Asia. Uh, you have root. the Wikipedia link, Jesus. I know, I know. I'm just, uh, it's it's it doesn't say regarded by many people in Southeast Asia as the king of fruits. Do you think I'm the durian of the United States? Oh, totally. Go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd love to try this. Do you, I wonder if I can um, find this somewhere. 
I'm sure you can. Yeah. Yeah. I don't or just I, ask your local grocery store. You got some inns there. I haven't seen this at Market Basket, so I'm going to have to go somewhere special. I got to no, find cotton candy grapes. Yeah. I, I don't know. Sam asks people at Stop and Shop all the time, but they're always just confused. Yeah, go to one of those specialty stores. Yeah. That'll be a good day. I'll bring them in. We'll all have cotton candy grapes. All right. Cotton cranberry grapes. Cotton, cotton crandy. Uh, if you want to be a part of the show, uh, use the hashtag Ask Death Talk. Email us Death Talk at deathwishing.com or give us, give us a call, 754 70 Talk. All right, let's do uh, what we're into. Wrap it up and we can go home for the day, guys. Mark. Mark, Woo-hoo! what you're into. I'm in first. Yeah. Okay, I'm into a couple things. First of all, I listened to this today for the first time and I'm officially into it. I listened to it like three times. White Reaper. The album's called The World's Best American Band. They have other albums. I haven't listened to them yet, but this album is sick. It's on polyvinyl. I, it just came out uh, last week, and it's really good. So if you like like cool, dirty-sounding pop rock stuff, you'll like this. It's, it's really cool. It's really fun. Um, in the same vein as that, cool-sounding, fun, pop, rocky stuff, there's this band called Remo Drive. That's awesome. Uh, their album came out only a few weeks ago, I think, and it's called Greatest Hits, um, and it's it's really cool. They have a bunch of music videos, and they're really good at making music videos. Like, a lot of bands just play, like, in a warehouse. They're, like, funny, entertaining, good music videos. So, Remo Drive, Greatest Hits, and uh, I'm also... Oh, I want to say that if you have a chance to see in the next year or so the Menzingers, you should... Because I believe that they are at the peak of their career right now. Peak hotness. I, I believe it. They've been a band for like more than 10 years. And right now, if you see them, they can't play a bad song. They are they played an hour and a half set of just straight fucking hits. Fire. They're Fire so hour. good. They're like, they played like nine songs off the new album. This is like, they'll always, however long they'll be a band, they're going to be good. But this is like the best Point to ever see them and I think that if you're even mildly interested in seeing them you'll regret not seeing them in this era of time because they are flying right now so go see them next time they play there we go Mark Mark approved Caleb um, I've been listening to this album just came out uh, it's from a band called Here Lies Man it's uh, self-titled uh, they call themselves Afro beat like stoner metal I, I don't know basically it's um for fans of Budos Band, stuff like that, uh, it's really good. I like that a lot. Um, what else? Oh, I rented The Void last night. It's a horror movie. That was pretty damn good. Oh, nice. Yep. Uh, that's all I got. Cool. Uh, I'll put this. I'll, this one's for Mark, too. Uh, Mark and I have been into the show Big Little Lies. Yes. Huge fans. Oh, it's a really good show. It's just, you guys it's, have just, been... it's just rich people doing bad things. That's all it is. <laughs> That's that's yeah. the summary of. Yeah. Uh, it's really good though. I was telling Caleb that how it's more, probably one of the most uh, well um, shot shot yeah television show I've ever seen. I don't, I, I don't know much about that stuff, obviously, but yeah, looks really cool to me. I don't know if Caleb would like it. It just looks so unappealing. It looks like step for like no, it's uh, weird. W- real wives of whatever. It's not. It's not every at trailer all. I saw for it, I was so interested. In. I wasn't like, I thought at it all. I just started really cool. watching. I was just like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna start watching." I this. liked the people that are in it. Yeah, and it looked really cool. They're, they're all real good, and it was very mysterious. And the entire time, it's mysterious. Yeah, there you don't. Like, there's mysteries that you don't find out until the last 10 minutes of the last episode. 100% back. And they just build it up the entire time. And the ending sort of, it pays off. It's not like, it's sort of like, ooh. Yo, TV, TV is like taking over movies. Because now, I feel like attention spans, like, you you feel like you can watch a 30-minute show, even a 40-minute show. You're like, oh, I can't, I don't have time for a movie right now. But I'll watch an episode. And you end up that watching. happens to me a lot. You end up watching, like, three episodes. Exactly. So you, you spend more time yeah. with it than a movie. Yeah. No. I would like, never watch movies. This, this is really, because I was just thinking to myself, you guys are telling me that. I was like, I was thinking to myself, I have a void right now of, like, I need a new show to watch. Like, I need something to, like, consume. And I've, like, I've been watching movies every night. Well, most nights. And I'll, you know, I'll be like, oh, God, I got to pick something kind of short, you know, blah, blah, blah. But, like, yeah, you throw on a show and you end up watching a show for longer than – it's it just – like, the, the the format of it just, like, keeps your attention a little bit more. Yeah, we were going to watch um, 
that show on Netflix with uh, what's the guy from? Oh my god, that that movie with Kristen Bell and and um, Myla Kunis. Oh, forgetting Sarah Marshall. Forgetting Sarah Marshall. That guy. Yep. What's that guy's name? Jason Siegel. Jason Siegel. Yeah. Um, he's in a new show on our movie on Netflix. I didn't know. It's called the. It's called like Discovery or the Discovery or something like that. Yeah. It looked real interesting, and something like up my alley. And we we're gonna watch it last night. They're like, oh, we don't have time to watch a movie. We ended up watching like four episodes of Parks and Rec, which probably equaled out to that movie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> which is like, it's weird. It's like the same thing where like people like don't listen to albums; they shuffle songs or listen to uh, singles. I don't. I don't. Yes, yeah, singles are very. I don't want to say they're just. They're probably just as important as they used to be, and maybe a little bit more because people are listening to playlists a lot. But I feel like albums are still people still listen. At least people that have. Always listen to albums are still listening to albums. Yes, but I don't think that's going to last forever. I think no, that's I, I, I'm gonna same, have to, same how, like... I have to disagree deep. with you on that. I think it's very similar. I think it's... Uh, I think you're wrong. How about that? I win. No, what makes me feel like Caleb is right? <laughs> Why? Because music has existed for a long time. Like, a fucking long time. I don't... I'm not going to say a number, but... For a really fucking long time. 15 years. And <laughs> recorded music has been around a long, long time. Yeah, but too. singles were the big thing in the 50s. No, listen, 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 listen. I will, sound breaking, I'm going to bring it up again, that fucking documentary thing. <laughs> I have to watch this. Well, they, they talked about, and I know that this is like common sense to a lot of people, and I think I might have known this, but it made it, it beat it into my head, so I knew this fact, is that um, f- albums exist just to have a higher price point to sell a single for the most part the reason why people started making long playing records LPs was because there was like one or two songs they were like this is going to be on the radio but instead of selling it for however much you bought a 45 for in the 60s you could sell it for quadruple the price and put 11 literal filler songs on it and make it like a bigger package so it wasn't until you know certain people started taking the long playing thing and actually making it a full creative thing, and that's where that's why we like albums is like a full creative thing. But like, I don't know if like music's existed for a long time, and like creative full albums has only really existed for like fifty years or something. You know what I'm saying? So like, it could go away. You know, especially we were just talking about people's attention spans with movies. It's sort of like. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. There are people like us that like albums, but I think everyone who's in middle school and high school right now, I'd love to know a stat of how many people are like... They, they watch a YouTube music video over and over again. Although, I'm, I'm, we're going into so many things, but I, I should have put this in the fucking show notes. I read an article, I'll put it in the thing, about uh, Drake's new... He called it a playlist. It's not an album. It's not a mixtape. It's a playlist. <laughs> more life and it's 22 songs and people because of the streaming culture and people are just listening to streaming that's how they like make their money and stuff that's why these albums have so many songs is because they everyone wants to hear all the new drake songs so you had 22 songs on this thing and then he had 22 songs that were on the billboard 200 or whatever so i'm 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 jumping into a million topics but i think it's funny that people are having these fucking long albums to like sort of catch everyone's attention i what i'm saying is contradicting themselves but whatever i just think itself i just think the 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 strive and the uh the goal to make the perfect album will never leave musicians I don't. Yeah. I don't. I wasn't you know saying I mean? albums are gonna be gone in five years. I, no, no, I know it's I know. gonna last. But I've, I'm just drawing a parallel between you know. I just different think, forms I think of media. artists are driven to create like what they. I don't want to say what they think is perfection, but like the best thing that they possibly can. And I think you can't convey that with one song. It has to be like a whole. I don't want to say collection, yeah, it but it has to be on, a whole piece of art. I think that depends on the artist, though. Oh yeah, definitely, a hundred percent, hundred percent. I guess you're right too because yeah. you think of Rebecca Black isn't trying to make yeah. a, a, a best album of all time. I mean, time. when you hit perfection right off, the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I think you're right in saying that. Um, fuck, I just lost my train of thought. You're saying artists will always have the, the strive to create something perfect. 
Oh, the biggest like albums you think about that are like very popular albums are like fully through. Yeah, all the songs yeah, are exactly. popular. You're right, yeah. but if Spotify just makes playlists in ten years or whatever spot, whatever Spotify is or whatever replaces Spotify, it's all just playlists and may get lost in the shuffle. But I think whatever punk music is in ten years, <laughs> whatever that's like. Uh, I think people still make albums like that. You know, I mean, that Definitely. one, that, this entire world of Death Wish and stuff, people like that will always make albums and Definitely. stuff. But I don't know if that'll matter for other genres of music. Cool. And just with like digital platforms and like everything seems to be like shorter bursts. Yeah. It just makes sense. But who knows? I could go the other way. Who knows? Well, that's probably a good place to wrap it up here. Um, I have a lot of editing to do tomorrow morning or tonight. We'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, that's been Death Talk episode 58. Thanks for uh, listening to our worthless opinions. Bye. <laughs>